everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. In this video, you'll see all six of my reviews for the Riddler Year One. Uh, so I've been doing this thing where we really add up the compendiums of each individual review once the collection comes out. The collection for Riddler Year One has come out now, uh, and all you get a brand new review for issue number two. Uh, back when it came out, I wasn't able to put out a review, so stay tuned for that. Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Riddler Year One, number one. This is an amazing book. I've been waiting for this for a long while. Uh, this is in the world of the Batman, so from the Black Label. So let's take a look at the creative team so you can see what I'm talking about. This book is written by Paul Dano, who played the Riddler, uh, with art by Steven Subic. And letters by Clayton Cowles, many, many uh, variant covers, which we'll see some at the end of the uh, video. But I am very excited for this. Uh, I love The Batman, one of my favorite films of the year, one of my favorite films, uh, really, just overall. Uh, so to get more about these characters that we visited, uh, it's really exciting. Uh, especially because who better to write about this character uh, than the person who played him on the screen. So let's take a look at the quick synopsis and then we'll go into some preview art. Uh, <clears throat> As depicted in Mad Reeves' hit movie, The Batman, the Riddler wasn't simply an assuming an eccentric with an affinity for wordplay and baffling clues, but as terrifying as a villain as any of the annals of The Dark Knight. Here you can see Edward Nashton evolve into the menace known as the Riddler. How did an unknown forensic accountant uncover the dark secrets of Gotham's underworld and come so close to bringing down the entire city? This six-issue miniseries is an immediate prequel to the Batman that detailed disturbing and at times shocking story of a man with nothing to lose. Uh, yeah, I think that's what makes this story very powerful, uh, which I'm very excited for. So, <clears throat> uh, we have... Also, artist Stevan Subic making his American Comics debut, including a variant cover that is the first of six interlocking covers. The collaboration with Paul Dano delivers a shadowy and gritty tale, a society's forgotten man who refuses to go unnoticed any longer. Uh, Subic recently finished a run on Conan the Sumerian for the French publisher Glenet and has brought with him great acclaim in Europe, and he's about to break out globally with a Batman city, a series unlike you've ever seen before. Uh, you know, I, I have read this book. I have looked at this art, and I cannot agree. I'm actually looking to go back and find that uh, Sumerian uh, comic and more work by Subic. So very excited for this. So let's take a look at some preview art so you can also be amazed. Uh, <clears throat> and I think one of the first things that I love about Subic's work is the layouts. They feel very calculated. They feel, uh, as far as the layouts themselves, the the each panel, it's very very much uh, precise. But everything that's happening inside, it's a little bit of chaos, which really really feels to me of just setting the tone for Riddler. I love that the colorings are just kind of washes. Nothing is really like hyper realistic or anything like that. You know. Sometimes artists tend to take some uh, an assignment like this and make it uh, realistic or try to make it look like uh, like the movie. But here, I think this is completely their interpretation, uh, especially when you're being guided by the, you know, by the actor who portrayed the character, which I can't really recall. I know Danny DeVito recently did a Penguin story, which is amazing. Uh, so really fun stuff to have stuff happen like this and bring a little notoriety to comics. Uh, and yeah, take a look at these other pages here. We see the both, both sides of Nash. Every time we zoom in on his eyes too, there's just something there that's missing, right? Uh, like it, like just empty looking into this empty, uh, glass of nothingness. Uh, I really like it. I love the way this feels like the Gotham we know. Uh, during the daytime, uh, I love the characters that are introduced, the people that Nash works with, or that Ed Edward works with, and some of these details, like these gory panels, like, look how 
disgusting this panel looks. And this is all from the point of view of Ed or Nash. So very much uh, <clears throat> just completely immersed in this experience for this book. I'm super excited. I can't wait to see what's next. Uh, highly, highly recommend you go check this out. Hopefully I can pick up some really cool covers, but let you guys let me know which covers you picked up. Hello everyone, in this Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast with a review for The Riddler, Year One, Number Two. This is a new book from DC Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team. We have writer Paul Dano, the actor who portrayed the Riddler in the Batman film, as well as artist Stefan Subic with letters by Clayton Cowell. In this issue, Writer Paul Dano continues the origin tale of the character portrayed in Matt Reeves' The Batman as brilliant forensic accountant Edward Nashton follows the trail of illegal payments and front companies holding on to his sanity becomes ever more challenging. Disturbing childhood memories, including an obsession with Thomas Wayne, threaten to derail him. Meanwhile, his investigation focuses on low-level human cog in the crime machine, which leads him to a shocking conclusion that may put his own life at risk. Uh, so this issue is very interesting because we are still exploring a lot of the origins of the Riddler, right? At this point, I don't know that Edward fully understands or knows where he's going with this plan, uh, but we know that Thomas Wayne is very important. Uh, and well, we also know that because we have seen the future, we have seen the film, uh, we know ultimately where this all leads him. But Paul Dano just really captures the voice of the character, seeing that he portrayed it himself. Uh, all this combined with Subic's amazing uh, art that just races the thrills, uh, the coloring that makes everything feel a little bit off, even the images of him as a child. Everything feels like it's uh, skewed through this lens of Edward Nashton and his memories. Uh, which makes it things even more terrifying. Uh, really, both of them really managed to recapture the essence of the film in the pages of these comic books. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the preview art here. And as I mentioned, even the scenes where we are seeing a young Edward, like they are so, th just the transition from these blobs into the characters um, you know, the recollection, using that as a recollection of a dream, just very strong choices by Subic just to bring that to life. Uh, but it's very well done. It helps a lot with the pacing. And it just really puts you in the mindset of Edward, how he's remembering those things, right? Something's not right. Something's off. Uh, and of course, he also knows that something's not right in his own firm. Uh, but un unraveling that mystery could lead him uh, into more trouble. Uh, because there's a lot of people that will um, will lose a lot if Edward brings this mistake onto life, if he if he brings this truth into the light, which is a very big theme of uh, the film itself. Uh, some more pages here. I love the transition of the dialogue and how the colors just get redder and more intense as Ed kind of like feels that he's being trapped here. Uh, I love it. I love the transition into these darker uh, colors or the lack of them as we go into the night and Edward's still working at his desk. Um, like I said, very strong choices by Subic. Uh, but yeah, overall, this really manages to do some amazing stuff. Uh, this issue also has some amazing variant covers, which you'll see some at the end of the video. So yeah, overall, this issue was a fantastic uh, follow-up to the opening and i think that uh this series just has so much to tell you about this specific character such an interesting character full of layers full of things that we lack understanding of and i think that's why this series has been so good so far Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for The Riddler, Year One, Issue Number Three. Uh, let's take a look at the creative team. 
So in this issue, we have actor Paul Dano uh, on writing duties with art by Stefan Subic and letters by Clayton Cowell as they continue this origin of the Riddler leading up to his appearance in Matt Reeves' epic film. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been... I have been waiting for this uh, this series to begin, and every issue has been a delight. Uh, I think Paul Dano really understands the character that he portrayed uh, and all the things that kind of led him there. Uh, that combined with Subic's fantastic art, uh, his weird little layouts, uh, all the little extra things that are being added, uh, just it really adds that whole... It really feels like you're still in this world that Matt Reeves had set up with the movie. Uh, so in this, um, in this issue, Edward reaches out to the daughter of one of them of a mob victim who might have insight into their operation. Meanwhile, his boss at the accounting firm believes there's a reason to be suspicious of Wayne industries payments to Bruce Wayne and his most daring move yet. Edward goes undercover at a company responsible for locking away highly sensitive documents. What he finds may lead to his most shocking revelation yet. Uh, so I don't have a lot of preview art, uh, but I do have a few pages that we can go over and take a look at. Uh, but let me tell you, I think if you can find more of Subic's work, I would recommend you check it out. I don't know if everything looks like this, but if it does, uh, I mean, it's just so bold and daring. Like there's some really, really interesting stylistic choices as well that I don't know if they're for everyone, but the aesthetic really, really fits with what I like. Um, there's also a lot of what we saw in the in the movie as far as like these little notes and the things that are scribbled away, like very much once again, given those seven vibes that the movie kind of brought on. Uh, and and the way that Subic draws uh, Paul Dano's character, uh, I mean, it is just like his little facial expressions, how sometimes his his fair, as you can see here. A lot of his face is kind of shaded out or, or covered up by his glasses or whatever the case may be. Uh, and then just even the characters, his interactions with other people, uh, like you can see here on this third page with his boss. Um, it's all just really, really damn fun. So let's take a look at those uh, those pages here. And here, like I said, you can kind of see what, everything that I was talking about. We see Subic like just giving us like the envelope with with the layout lines still on there like right these are different panels technically uh so it's just a really fun trick for pacing uh and then we have the repeated panels which once again allows for this kind of mysterious thing as it unfolds uh and then the color drops here in this last panel and just like i said i love that edward nash's face is it's rarely fully visible uh at all like in a you know as a complete which really leads to the mystery uh so yeah this is one of the most fun things uh that dc is doing i love that they're connecting things to the film i love that the films are driving people to read comics because i feel like that should be of course as a company they, the main goal should be for them to make money uh but as creators and dc editorial uh and dc studios one of their goals should be to bring people to read the source material because um, comics are so much fun. So, yeah, very excited for this. Also, some fantastic covers. Uh, you'll see some towards the end of the video. So let me know what you've been thinking about this series, how you're enjoying it. Uh, and, and let me know what you think, because even though we kind of know the destination, I think this journey has been really exciting. So <laughs> Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for The Riddler, Year One, Issue Number Four. Uh, this is the in, set in the world of Mad Reeves, the Batman. Uh, so let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this. Uh, actor Paul Dano and artist Stevan Subic continue their origin of The Riddler leading up to his appearance in Mad Reeves' epic film, The Batman. Uh, we also have letters by Clayton Cowles in this issue. Uh, after a shocking discovery that unleashes a primal scream, we are sent back into Edward's past. Uh, so this, I really enjoy that this issue is really all about uh, Edward Nash, Nashton when he was a child in the orphanage, which we saw in the movie. Uh, that was that was part of his backstory, but now we're really unfolding everything that happened there, uh, like drifting through a nightmare. We experience 
Edward's traumatic upbringing, beginning with an abandoned baby howling on the steps of the Gotham Orphanage. Through the filter of Edward's memories, we experience his brutal past, but also learn a once possible hope, a hope that was dashed and that led to a lifelong obsession and hatred of Thomas Wayne. Uh, so, yeah, in... I think my favorite part about this book and this series, uh, and there's a lot of really good stuff, including the art, but my favorite part is that I wonder if this is uh, Paul Dano's just expansion of the character's origin and how, you know, how he used these uh, motivations to play the role in the film, right? I think if you if you're reading this, you really understand the Riddler uh, that we saw in the film and why he was tr what he was trying to accomplish and his motivations. Uh, so let's go take a look at some preview art. And I'll talk more about this issue. And this issue is probably one of the darkest ones, especially because we're dealing with a lot of childhood trauma from uh, from Edward Nashton. Um, I love the lack of color and just specifically, even the lack of detail in, in people's faces, expressions. Uh, and as we will see a little bit more forward, um, even the lack of expressions in, in you know, a young Riddler. Uh, all the adults have this look like they just look very creepy, right? And and I understand there is uh, there's an ambience that they're trying to build with this book. And I think it really delivers. I think Subic is the perfect artist for something like this. Uh, the painterly style, uh, the washed out tones, and I just love the panel progression as we zoom in here into a young Edward. Um, uh, you know, just uh, there's also this really cool. Um, uh, there's there is a riddle in the book that you can solve throughout. To, you know, at the end of the book, and a lot of the clues are laid out here in these opening panels. Uh, so make sure to go check that out. Maybe I'll make a small video on that, uh, on the reveal of what it is. Uh, I I'm a little proud that I actually figured that out. Uh, although it's not the, the most difficult thing in the world, but uh, sometimes details like that just fly over my head. Uh, there's also a really cool Mike, uh, Mike Magnola cover uh, for this issue that I hope I'm able to get. You can see that at the end of the video. Uh, but man, yeah, this series just... I, I love the film. If you love the film, I think you're gonna really you're really enjoying this series uh, because it only expands on the character of the Riddler in such a way that uh, really makes you believe his motivations. But not only that, it expands on Gotham and explains what Gotham was like, you know, years and years prior to the film. Uh, Gotham is as much part of the problem here as uh, as the Riddler, uh, and it's part of that exploration that. Paul Dano and Subic are are going through in this uh, book. Uh, specifically, like I said, this issue deals a lot with the childhood trauma, and that's probably even stronger. It's, it's just such a, such so well done. Um, very excited for this series uh, to continue. Uh, so as Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review of The Riddler Year One, Issue Number Five. Uh, the The story continues here, so let's take a look at the creative team before we get into all this. Uh, this story is written by Paul Dano, with also additional writing by Ezra Klein for page 27. It's used very wisely. Uh, it's really interesting to have an additional writer, but it's uh, it makes sense. Uh, with art by Steven Subic, uh, letters by Steven Subic and Clayton Cowles for uh, some of the last few letters. Uh, also, a lot of really cool variant covers that you can see towards the end of the video. Uh, in the penultimate issue of the hit miniseries, continue, uh, features an unusual break in format as we will see Ed Edward Nashton constructing his master plan for taking down the corrupt officials and criminals of Gotham City in the pages of his journal. As his mind spirals deeper and deeper, so too does his writing become more unhinged. How can he continue to labor for his accounting job uh, by day while he has to become a more enraged after what he's uncovered? Uh, yeah, I mean, this one really 
escalates. I think this is one that feels the closest to the Nashton, dead or Nashton that we know uh, from the film. Like, like he feels like he's almost there. Um, and I think Paul Dano just really honed in on what makes this character tick and, and what this character can really bring uh, to the screen. Also, the fact that most of the art here, as we can see, like it takes pages in these journals, right? It's all very unusual comic style. Like this is this is more of like those books that the police found in the film. Like this is what was inside of those. And it's really fun to explore that. Uh, I think obviously there's some very stylized choices. And I think it also mirrors how uh, Riddler is feeling in some of these moments as he's creating these entries in his journal. Uh, and then, like I said, just... Subic's art, uh, very much out of the norm, really feels like uh, like this isn't even a comic book if you just had to look at, you know, a, a page like this. Uh, but it's great. It's great a way to really stretch the medium and uh, test the boundaries of what you could do. And, you know, that's only a preview. The book continues to just devolve into this madness that uh, both Dano and Subic have really created here. Like I said, there's a really fun page towards the end that's a completely separate thing written by somebody else that just really punches in the message of uh, of this issue. So excellent stuff. I'm really, really enjoying this series. It is one of my favorite movie tie-ins. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is amazing. So... Hello everyone, then you're here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for The Riddler, year one, issue number six. This is the finale of this series. Uh, and boy, what a, what a book it's been. Uh, but let's talk about the creative team before we get into this. Uh, written by Paul Dano, with art by Steven Subic, letters by Clint Cowell. Uh, so in the last issue, we had a guest writer who wrote an article that was posted at the end of the issue. There's also some amazing, amazing cover uh, variant covers for this issue and for the whole series really as a whole. Uh, but let's talk about the synopsis uh, and we'll get into it. This, the time has come, Edward Nashton's long, painful psychological journey and downward spiral have finally brought him to the point where he's ready to take direct action against the corrupt of Gotham. Embittered and abandoned and believing that his world is aligned against them, he's reached the time to lash out his extensive research and clandestine operations have left him with a deeper knowledge of the city's web of criminality more than anyone in Gotham. And now he knows exactly which targets to strike and when, as Edward finally dons the mask of the Riddler. The series ends right before the start of the first murderer's attack, shown in Matt Reeves' film, The Batman. Actor Paul Dano has brought this character on uh, to, to life on screen, and now he completes Edward's arc with this groundbreaking prequel to the movie together with artist Steven Subic, they've crafted, they crafted a disturbing and emotional tale, filling out the backstory of one of the most unique and terrifying villains that the dark Knight has ever faced. Uh, yeah. I mean, that really, really sells this book. Um, I will say my only, my only, um, qualm, I guess I'll, I'll say now is that I wish, I was since I was doing the reviews month to month. Obviously, I read this month to month. I think this book would read so much better um, if you just read it all at once. So I, I believe the collection is coming out sometime in November. Uh, so if you haven't read that, make sure to pick. You know, if you're not picking up the issues monthly, and somehow you're watching this video, uh, pick up the collection. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna pick it up anyways, even though I got the singles, because I'm sure it's gonna look cool as hell. I'm sure it's going to be a nice hardcover because this is a movie tie-in and DC is really pushing that, those, those kind of things. Um, and I would even say on the reread, I would probably just read this and go right into the movie as the synopsis said. Like the, the book really flows really well into that. Um, and I think, you know, Paul Dano more than anyone probably knows what this character uh, feels like and what he sounds like in the page. Uh, so I think he really brought that to life here in this book, uh, you know, combined with Subic's amazing artwork that feels 
off kilter and not fully complete. Like it feels like like a fuzzy memory. Uh, like you're retelling this in, in you know, like something. It it has a feel like that. It definitely also has a very gritty feel like the movie itself. Uh, so let's take out some preview art so you can see what I'm talking about. You know, as we kind of dropped here, Edward is trying to help this one person escape. I won't go too much into details as to who she is. So you can kind of, you know, if you've seen the movie, you probably know a little bit of what's going on. But I'll leave it vague in the review. Uh, and then we get to see a little bit of a tour of the of Arkham where it was an orphanage and now it's kind of an abandoned place as we've seen in the film. Uh, and just all this, like, like I said, all the, the facial expressions, like all the incomplete faces, uh, the small panels, really dark stuff. Like it really sets the mood, right? It kind of brings you right into the movie. And then I love the transition here in this middle page as we get into the red tone, because that, that red tone really feels like the film. Uh, and then when we switch over to just the Riddler, you know, the, the title page, I guess, here, as we see chapter six, as he's leaving the asylum, uh, like it just this is now he has become uh, the Riddler that we know from the film. And his mission is now very clear in his head. So from there, they, you really capture with the feeling of the of the film. And it's really fun to see play out all throughout the series. So. This book also has some amazing, amazing variant covers. I probably have so many copies of this book that more than I should. Uh, but I mean, just the imagery for this film and this story has been amazing. Like whether it's Subic doing it in on the interiors or whether some of these artists like Jacques and Senkevich that I've been tasked with giving us some amazing covers. Uh, yeah, this, like I said, this book really just ends right before the opening scene. And it's crazy to know, like, even though you know kind of where the story is going, the ride was really the fun part of this one. So very entertaining stuff. Really adds a lot to the world building of the film, which I love anyways. So it's a great companion to 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 the film. Um, so I, I'd be curious to hear from like maybe some of the some of the actors from the film or people that are working. I know they can't really talk about it right now because of the strike, uh, but Matt Reeves could. The directors are on strike, so. Maybe I'll send him a tweet uh, to see if he's read this. Maybe he, I'm sure he's. I'm sure he read this way in advance. Uh, so I, I wonder how much of the process, uh, you know, Paul Dano was involved with either uh, editorial from DC or like people from the film from Warner Brothers. So I think that'd be interesting to explore. And hopefully, this uh, strike comes to a resolution where everybody gets paid a fair wage soon, so we can. You know, so people can talk about stuff like this. And as we get ready for more DC films, um, I hope that we do more tie-ins like this. I think these are fun, especially if the people involved. Like this week, we're also getting uh, the, act, the actual plays, uh, Miss Marvel, Yvonne Milani, Villani. She's co-writing the Miss Marvel book. Like that stuff is cool, right? So just a lot of, a little bit, those little details connecting the movies and the TV stuff to the comics. It's always a lot of fun. I think DC has been doing a great job of that. I feel like Marvel could do a little better, but that's uh, besides the point. So if you have read this book, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell. So you know when we go live, that is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Let me know what you thought about this issue. Let me know what you thought about the series overall. Uh, and thanks for watching everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh